Wow, Leon has just had his one year anniversary. He's been living here with me a year officially, September 25th, a year ago. So I bought him a big scallop to celebrate the occasion, like a birthday cake or a birthday cupcake, sort of. And we jousted some to celebrate. I don't know for sure where Leon grew up. I like to think it was Upper Maine or the Bay of Fundy, just because it sounds like a fun place and it's a major lobster fishing area. I grew up in North Georgia. I hike here often and explore here often, and I have a huge fascination with the area. The beauty of the nature, the varied culture, and the history of the area. One of the fun, eclectic landmarks around here, the school bus graveyard. I'll turn this into one of my forts when the zombie apocalypse hits. A barricade of old buses lined up bumper to bumper. Perfect. <laughs> if you survive the zombie apocalypse and need safety and refuge, just holler, I'm a friend of Lord Leon, and we'll let you in. You can't eat Leon, though. We'll have some canned soup and a big gallon of pudding for you. My girlfriend and I have been living between South Carolina and Georgia for the past 14 years. Since we live between two houses with our cats and with Leon, I think it's best to move Leon to the most active house. I just recently ordered Leon a new massive aquarium, and this is the best location to house that new much larger tank. Well, it arrived. From the west coast to the east coast, California to Georgia. Speaking of moving, here's how you can become Leon's neighbor. Leon is also a lord of a plot of land in Scotland thanks to established titles. The first 200 viewers purchasing a title pack using Leon's link, establishedtitles.com forward slash Leon, will effectively be next to Leon's plot, a neighbor, within a few minutes of walking distance. You will also become a lord or a lady, like Lord Leon. We can build our little Leon kingdom. You could officially change your name to lord or lady and get it on your credit card, plane tickets, etc. You can even get it on your dating profiles if you'd like to impress a future lady or lord. Established Titles is a fun novelty gift and a way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts too. Established Titles plants a tree with every order and they work with global charities, One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. It's a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number so you can see the exact location of your land. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code LEON, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash LEON to get your gifts now. Lord Leon's New Lair This pallet weighs over 750 pounds. The setup is not going to be easy. The stand is all aluminum and has to be bolted together. The 
crate is smashed right here, unfortunately. So I'm a little concerned about what I'm going to find inside. Hopefully the glass isn't cracked. It's a long ride from Cali to Georgia though, so who knows. Fortunately, everything looks great. No damage. It was packed well for the trip. There are eight cats at this house, so obviously there's a lot of curiosity going on. This one is Jules, and here's Leo, Leo the cat. No relation to Leo and the lobster. The black cat is Jack. He has a twin brother that's missing half of his tail from some traumatic event before we trapped them and brought them into the tribe. That's Halen, AKA Halen Balin, AKA Balin, AKA Monkey Cat. <laughs> As you know, most pets have a name and also have a nickname or several. The yellow girl here is Rue, Rudy, Rudy Roo, Rudy Tootie. I'll also be bringing Baxter, Bobby, and Abby down to integrate with the cats at this house soon. You know this, and I know this, but the other eight cats here don't know this yet. Bobby is a master of the karate. <laughs> It'll basically be like bringing Chuck Norris down to live with these other cats. So the integration should be a fun ride. This glass aquarium itself weighs at least 650 pounds. It'll take at least four to six people to lift it up onto the stand. I don't have that many friends though, so I looked into renting a forklift to carefully lift it up onto the stand. This would definitely do it. Or this one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, with the building and construction boom here, there weren't any forklifts available to rent. That was going to cost me $300 anyway, so now I can save on my budget. But I have to figure out a way to get this 650 pound fragile glass aquarium lifted up. Here's what I came up with. I needed to buy cement blocks anyway for the koi pond. No, no, this is not OSHA approved, but it worked and it was basically free. This aquarium is a work of art. The glass is three quarters inch thick or about two centimeters thick. The bottom is pre-drilled for plumbing to a sump tank. It's rimless, sleek. I clean it out well and then put the sand in. <laughs> Obviously, I've got to get the water in this thing fast or the cats will start using it as the ultimate litter box. I'm using sand on this aquarium instead of crushed coral shell, so we'll see if Leon's back stays cleaner with this change. I always enjoy a trip to the aquarium store to get supplies and to look around, of course. I got Leon some more rock and some sock filters for the sump. I also enjoy a trip to the coast, 
So I went out to the Atlantic to see what other interesting things I could find to entertain Leon in his new pad, or to help the ecosystem overall. I netted up some glass shrimp to help with the cleanup. Leon tends to sling his food everywhere, so these will be great to scoop up his leftovers. Crabs are scurrying around everywhere. Now, the new aquarium is ready to be filled with reverse osmosis water. This takes a few days. The plumbing goes in, and then the salt. The salt settling on the bottom reminds me of a lava lamp. Obviously it's very dangerous to put anything live into this aquarium until the salt is well mixed. This thick salt mixture at the bottom will fry Leon, fry any fish, any plants, and even any filter media or beneficial bacteria. Also you can get a false reading of the tank's overall salinity if you have a lot of salt settling to the bottom like this and you're testing your water from the top. So the pump runs for several days to completely mix the salt into the water. back at the Woods House in South Carolina. When the new aquarium water is running well and at the correct salinity, it's time to bring Leon's cave down and some of the crushed coral media to seed the new aquarium with good bacteria. Obviously, Leon's a little concerned when I start taking all of his rocks away. These are put into a tub and kept wet with salt water so the good filtering bacteria stay alive for the drive down and transfer to the new aquarium. These rocks are well established with good bacteria. They've been in here a year and are a large part of the biological filtration of his aquarium. Leon sits watching his world being dismantled and taken away. Now he's mad because I messed up his garden of bushes, but I eventually take those too, very carefully. Now Leon is left with nothing. I even take some of his gravel floor. It's only temporary though. Hopefully he's not sitting there thinking all good things come to an end. His new aquarium will be so much nicer. I clip up a black pillowcase to give Leon a dark area he can still feel hidden in. And I drive these rocks down to the new aquarium. I build his cave back pretty much like it was before, and I put the crushed oyster shell from the old aquarium into a basket in the sump for the new aquarium. So this is where we are now. This is all looking good. The water flow is excellent, parameters are all good, and the sump is like it needs to be. I'll let this run for a week, and then I'll bring Leon down to see what he thinks of his new, even larger aquarium. Today is moving day for Leon. Hopefully this will all go well. A lot of details and a lot to do. I start with this tote. It already has some water from the new aquarium from Georgia in it. So Leon will have a taste of the new water he's going into. I also add some of his aquarium water to it. And I scrub his back so he's nice and clean going into his new aquarium. I want to see if the sand in his new aquarium is cleaner than the crushed coral in this aquarium, or if he still gets his trademark avatar patch in the sand.
he's pretty pissed off now. So let's just go for this. Now I'll scoop him up with the net and carefully lower him into the tote. Obviously, he's not going without a fight. <laughs> we wrestle for a bit until I can get the net to the side of him and under him. Leon's not playing though, he's on it. And I'm trying not to be too aggressive. Just let him climb in and then lift him up. The floor here is cement and I don't want him landing on it. It's always cool to bring him up from his water world and into our air world for a few seconds and get a good close look at him. He's nice and calm, not flipping out. I'm trying to be too. Here we go, up and over. Notice how he's moving the water up at his mouth. I add some more water to cover him completely. Then I bag him just like a bag koi for travel or shipping. Obviously, I go from the back rather than the front. This tote is 23 inches or 58 and a half centimeters long. Leon's getting to be a big boy. Now that he's in the bag safely and with water that covers his back, I add pure oxygen to the bag. Now Leon is in his own safe little travel bubble. A lot can happen when traveling, obviously. I could get a flat tire, have car trouble, get stuck in a traffic jam, get in an accident, get caught speeding and mouth off at the officer and go to jail. In this bag with oxygen within a hard-sided tote, Leon is safe though for several days. So he's good until I can get bailed out. I set his tote in the back of the car lengthwise like this. This is how Koi should be carried too. If I have to slam on the brakes really hard, Leon will roll over sideways rather than go slamming face first or tail first into the tote. And Leon leaves the woods house he lived in for an entire year and heads further south to Georgia. I make one stop to check on him to make sure he's doing well with the trip. All looks great. Leon's basically just hanging out in his bubble. And we're here, safely. Leon the lobster, meet Leo the cat. Jules has to check this strange new friend out too. Halen's head's bobbing and investigating cautiously. I'll introduce all the cats here in a later video. 
Obviously, temperature is a critical thing when moving cold-blooded animals. Even warm-blooded animals are adversely affected by temperature changes. Our bodies function at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Just raising that three or four degrees gets us all out of whack with a fever. And a few degrees lower than that can set us into hyperthermia. So suddenly setting a cold-blooded animal into water that's hotter or colder than the water they're in causes them major stress. Their body is literally suddenly changing temperature. Imagine your body doing that. I've checked the temp of Leon's bag water and of his new aquarium, and they are remarkably within a degree of each other. But before I put him into his new aquarium, I add some of the aquarium water to his bag so the two waters are as close as possible for pH and salinity too. In the meantime, I add the glass shrimp I collected earlier. There are seven total. Once they go in here, I'm gonna to have to resist trying to count them every day. There's a lot of space here and a lot of places to hide. I know, I'll try and count them every day though. Are you like that? I also picked up a few empty clusters of oyster shells, and when I got home from the coast, I found these tiny crabs hiding inside the shells. I'm not sure what type these are yet, but if you know, please comment for us all below. Leon will probably eat these crabs if he can catch them, but they're really small right now, and they have a lot of places to hide. When Leon has been slowly acclimated, he's ready to go in and check out his new lair. I just ease him slowly out of the bag. He cruises around for a bit, checking everything out. This is his new home. He kicks it into all terrain and climbs right up the mound of rocks and over. Then heads back out, then comes back in and immediately starts digging and bulldozing a nest in the sand. I guess he's decided this is where he wants his new bedroom to be. He 
he's kicking up the sand pretty good. The shrimp and the tiny crab settle in too. This crab likes the safety of the mussel shell. I wouldn't stay there too long though. Leon takes a break from digging and cruises around his new pad some more. Then he gets back to work. I turn down the lights in the room and let him settle in for a while. It's been a long day and a lot of change and adventure for him and me. The next morning, everything is looking great. Leon has built himself a big nest and seems to be chilling and enjoying his new aquarium. I offer him a piece of fish. And I put another small piece out on the other side of the aquarium for him to find later when he's on walkabout and foraging. The shrimp are already picking on it, but aren't anywhere near as aggressive as the killifish were. For those of you that are into poop and weird biology stuff, watch this. So everything is looking great overall. Leon is using the entire aquarium and seems to be settling in well to his new wider, larger space. The little shrimp and crabs will find the leftovers he's spewing. The new aquarium is beautiful, so I hope he's enjoying it. I'll have a new update soon and let you know how Leon's adapting and how the shrimp and the tiny crabs are doing. Hopefully they will all be stealth and fast and smart, and maybe Leon won't eat them. We'll see. Leon has been with me for one year. That's amazing. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share it with anyone you think might enjoy following Leon's journey. We'll see you soon. Hey man, let a dude sleep, okay? Oof. <laughs>